Welcome back, fellow Jazz Bums. Today, we are going to dive into JMI Recordings. We've been fortunate enough to get a couple promo records from them. Um, this is a label that we have been aware of and have been excited about in the past. Uh, they have all analog LPs that they've been putting out with modern musicians. Um, but before we jump into it, remember to like and subscribe. Remember, we live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, so come and hang out. We also have a, our Discord, so we'll link that in the description below. So come and hang out on the Discord as well. Like and subscribe and uh, leave some comments. Let us know what you think about this label. Um, so with that, I'm going to kick it over to Felipe to get us started. Yes. So um, we are fortunate enough. Uh, I already had some uh, JMI uh, recordings. And uh, Jay, one of the founders of the label, was kind enough to reach out to us. Just to make it very clear, he sent us some records. Not to review or anything, but just you know to 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 spread the word, and uh, we, we the three of us we got the, the same records. We we're going to go over them, but uh, I think it was very kind. It, it's nice to. It's important to make it clear that we're just doing that with no interest it's because we we had to express our opinions. We we, we had really good impressions, and I, I think it's it's important to to, to share that and uh, and and make people aware that. You know, there's labels that not only reissue full analog, but actually making full analog, which is, I think, is is great. Just like uh, Coherent, for example, right? So mm -hmm. JMI Recording, it's it's a it's a label that's seven years old. They started in 2016. It was founded by Stephen Mandel and Jay Cohn. They and they're in New York. So Stephen Mandel is a, is a is a veteran in the music industry. He has produced, engineered records with uh, Elvis Costello, The Roots, Todd Rundgren, Squeeze, Erica Badu, Common, Roy Highgrove, just to say a few. He's also been working uh, since the beginning of the Jimmy Fallon uh, Late Show. And uh, he's been working with The Roots for over 25 years. Uh, he works at Electric Lady Studios in New York, the famous Electric Lady Studios. Uh, he worked on records like uh, D'Angelo, Voodoo, Common, uh, like Water for Chocolate, and, and so on. So he, he's like highly accomplished uh, industry uh, person, engineer, uh, recording. And uh, Jay Cohn is an attorney. He, he previously co-owned uh, Brown Brothers Recordings. They are uh, based in New York, as I said. And in 2017, they, they uh, onboarded a, a third member, which is David uh, Slitsky. He's uh, he's done everything in music, uh, engineering, musician, digital marketing, co content developer. Then he joined them in 2017. And this label has been doing uh, re issuing uh, rec re original recordings since then. They are analog, cut to tape, uh, everything as we want, AAA, and really, really nicely done. And uh, we're going to go over some of uh, the records that we receive, some records that I have, the, the musicians there, and so on. So let's go. I'm going to start with this one first. It's an interesting one. It's called Maya. And All so right. I'm going to butcher these guys' names probably, but it's got um, Alexander Sever, Omer um, Govreen, Floris Capine, and then Voter Kuhn. So yeah. I guarantee you I messed those names up. But it's an interesting record. Um, and one of the backstory on this one's kind of cool. So one of the things I wanted to go into is kind of some of the details they put on the records, right? Uh, but first, let me just show you the cover. So the cover's really nice on this one, nice art. Just picture of the guys. And then my favorite part is kind of the inside here. It's got mm -hmm. my outfit of the guys. Um, another thing that I thought was really neat about all of these records is they have, like, really nice printed inner sleeves. Yeah. Um, so Alexander plays the vibraphone, Amir plays the double bass, Flores plays piano, and then Voter plays drums. So it's quartet. Yeah. To me, it was kind of a chill record, kind of laid back. But it, it surprised me because, you know, it was like super kind of chill and unassuming. But there were parts where it, it would build up in, into something that I wasn't expecting. I don't mm -hmm. know if that makes sense or not. So I liked it. Some of the neat details they include on the records are like the recording details. So like on this one, it, it was recorded October 20, 21st, 2021 by Scott Hull at Masterdisc in New York. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, so it was manufactured at United Pressing, Nashville, Tennessee. Well, um, one, one of the key details is the, the kind of tape aspect. So not right. only 
is it is it is it uh recorded at lullaby factory but it's recorded on ampex mm 1000 two inch 16 track tape right so all of these recordings that we are aware of uh, i think the entire label they record to tape right so mm -hmm. it's uh it, it's part of kind of the uh their 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 kind of a mission statement is to is to create a a, a true aaa um uh modern um jazz uh, record yeah. so really really cool um and the other thing i do want to mention is the the vibraphonist uh sever and then the double bass player gavran they write all the tracks on this and mm -hmm. having the bass player kind of like have half the tracks essentially yeah. i mean it's the the music is is pretty cool like the um mm -hmm. you know it, it, in in terms of the trio it's basically like piano trio plus vibes but mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of a uh, of 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 soloing and leading um based on those two two members and and yeah. that makes this kind of a really cool record yeah i found it i found it to be really like immersive um the mastering i mean the, the mixing I, th I think it's it's done, done so well it's really immersive the vibes kind of surround you they go they come from everywhere they paint like this dreamy super cool chill landscape it, it's a fantastic recording i mean the way those vibes are presented is like top-notch thing yeah yeah i agree um Thanks for the extra details, Mike. I just like missed that paragraph on the back. But yeah, so I mean, they tell you every single detail yeah. where it was recorded, you know, who mixed it, who mastered it, mm -hmm. um, where it was pressed, yeah. all that. So super clear transparency, which is awesome. Um, another thing that I noticed that's really cool is on the back of all the covers, it says you can, JMI offers oh, yeah. a 24 reproduction of yeah. the cover, which is available for 25 bucks. And it's printed on fine quality paper and suitable for framing. Which is obviously mm -hmm. a nod to CTI, right? I mean, it's got yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. very 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 cool. Yeah. So I mean, I would say out of the three, I'd probably put this one as my out of the three that I got as my least favorite, but I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, we as we get into the other ones, this was uh, manufactured so pressed in Tennessee at um, where is it? It is United United, United, United Record. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Now this one was was uh, put out in 2022. The next two came out this year, and the pressing manufacturing process has been changed. I mean, we'll 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 get into those details as well. But it seems like the first I don't know, like handful, like ten or so uh, releases on the label um, did come in like a Stoughton jacket or similar mm -hmm. jacket pressed in the United States and uh, and that does change so we'll, we'll we'll kind of see kind of the evolution of their manufacturing process um as well but yeah i mean i think i think this is a cool record like i mentioned like vibraphone plus a trio it's uh they're they're i i, I don't know if they're all from amsterdam but recorded in amsterdam so it does mm -hmm. you know have kind of a european vibe to it and uh but it, it's really nice and and you can stream that one right Yes, this one. I mean, I haven't checked all the streaming services, but the this is available on at least Spotify and some other streaming services. The other ones I don't think are available to stream, and I don't think they provide snippets on the website on JMI Recording web uh, website. So, um, so you'll you'll have to kind of just dive into it. But I think um, I think that's okay because the other ones are awesome. They're mm -hmm. really yeah. awesome recordings. Should we move on to the next one? Oh yeah, let's do it. I, I really like this record. I like when the trios go to a different approach, you not know, like traditional bass, drum, and um, and piano. And I think they they here they they they, they hit really good raid notes, right? And uh, we have uh, not only Lagilund but Taishan Soy on drums, which is a yes. fantastic, amazing drummer. More like modern jazz, really different approach uh, to music. And I like the sound of this record, uh, first and foremost. But actually, the, the songs are, are really good here. I mean, the, the composing, everything. This is like a... Very it's nice. And, and, and the photography they use is just great, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You open the gatefold, stick. And again, the the printed inner sleeves. 
right? And uh, and some extra the catalogs here. There's a bunch oh, of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. And uh, and uh, here's the all, all the releases so far and all that's coming. There's uh, some records coming later this year, early next year, which are totally I I wouldn't miss them. Yeah, I'm definitely getting them. And we're gonna talk about that later. So so just to jump in with some details. So uh, Lund is a guitarist um, nor from uh, Norway, and uh, Felipe, as you mentioned, he's playing with Tyson Shorey on drums, and then Matt or Matthew Brewer on bass. Mm -hmm. And I actually mm -hmm. just got a Tyson Shorey trio record on oh, this pod, fantastic. and the same bass player is with him. And then he has a piano player who is a uh, Aaron uh, Dial on piano. Mm -hmm. So essentially. It's a it's similar bass and drums. Tyson Shorey on drums is awesome. Uh, and, uh, I don't want to say he steals the show because I do feel like Lund, his guitar playing is excellent yeah. as well. But sure. between between the three of them, this is this was, I mean, the next record we're going to show is also really awesome in it, in its own yeah. unique way. But this mm -hmm. is definitely one to check out. Um, yeah. It's a little laid back. But it, the the playing is so good, like it's like oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. And then I do I did want to go over some of the details on the back here. So this one was recorded in December 2021 at Reservoir Studios in New York City, um, and it was recorded to a Studer A800 MK or Mark III multi-channel tape recorder on ATR Magnetic Master two-inch tape. So they're providing all that detail, right? Yeah. I mean, this is triple A all the way. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, um, even the, the the hype stickers, they're they're so well done. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is still available. I'm pretty sure I think Maya mm -hmm. um may not be available, but these other two are for sure. And Maya yeah. might come back and print. Um, but but yeah. this this one is, is I listened to this just before we we sat down to record again. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh it's it is really excellent. He's the musicianship on this is just 10 out of 10. So uh, yeah. really happy with this. Definitely oh, yeah. Yeah. Be revisiting for sure. It's really creative, right? And and um, just to add, Mike, all, all those records, they, they can be ordered through your local record store. They might have it or you might check them out because that's how yeah. I got my first JMIs. Okay. Yeah. And the yeah. other thing I did want to mention is that, so the last one was recorded at United in Nashville. Now they, oh, from what they, from what I read on their website, it sounds like this is they have a new pressing plant in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like it might be like JMI's pressing plant. Um, I'm not sure exactly how this works out. But so for this record and the next record we're we'll talk about, this was pressed uh, in uh, Vinyl de Paris in Neuilly sur Marne, Paris, France. So mm -hmm. that is that is where they're pressing these now. They're, they are pressed in Paris. Mm -hmm. Um, so they moved from United in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and the the jackets are a little different. Um, they're a little more flimsier, but I have to say the gloss um, and it's amazing, it's yeah. substantial. Like they're still nice jackets, and uh, the image yeah. of their punch is amazing. Yeah, they're yeah. just different. Um, yeah. So the, so yeah, so I'm sure they're the whole manufacturing process is in Europe now. So that probably is a factor. But um, yeah. look, I mean, really nice glossy photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we should ask Brandon about the photography a little, but it's uh, it's really nice and and yeah, and I did want to give uh, Mike Notes and Tones a sh shout out because this Tyson Shorey record I picked up because uh, Mike basically says Tyson Shorey's trio is like one of the best yeah. trios out right now. So the fact that two of the members are on this record, I think, um, also kind of speak to mm -hmm. the quality that that it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just for the record, Taishon is a uh, college professor. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, um, it's a toss up between these last two records, which one was my favorite, but I really love this record. I mm -hmm. think that Lund's playing is, I mean, it's really beautiful tone and all that, but his lines are just really creative and interesting, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy this one. Um, I mean, for uh, comparison, because not for comparison, but for reference for people, uh, which uh, classic jazz guitar player would you compare this to? You know, what I I was listening to, because I don't listen to too much jazz guitar trio, but I do have a few records. So I was listening to a lot of Kenny Burrell. 
but mm -hmm. I think the time period is different enough that it yeah. um, the style, like the drumming style, was different. Um, so I, you know, I would say maybe a little Kenny Burrell in there, um, but uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not the person to uh, you know to be an authority. What think, so what do you think, Felipe? Uh, yeah, I think Kenny, in a sense, kind of very like a laid back, but. Um... But I, I think uh, most jazz guitar players, uh, there's always a little bit of ball set there, for sure. You know, the other thing that impressed me about all three of these records is just how good they sound. I mean, mm -hmm. AAA or not, I've got plenty of AAA records that sound just okay, and all three of these just sound really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, Felipe, how do they compare to some of the other records you have on your system? Uh, they sound outstanding. Outstanding. And I think it has to do also uh, be, be quiet on tape, right? Of course, AAA, like the freshness of the tape being like right off the yeah, the, the the recording. That I think I think that that's that's a, that's a great point there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, if if you think of like old uh, jazz records, they were recorded really well, uh, like tube gear and everything. But perhaps they're not pressed as, as best as they could. And now we have like fresh tapes, fresh, well done tapes pressed as best as they can. So uh, I think I, th I think that's a win-win. We also have to give credit to the guys in the studio too, right? I mean, oh, they yeah. know what they're doing. I mean, the, the, the you know, it sounds so good because of their experience in miking up the the performers and all that stuff. So yeah, I was really impressed. Yeah, those yeah. are like high, highly seasoned people. Right? They know what they're doing. Yep. Yeah, and all the details, all the engineers, producers, executive producers, everything is is listed. Um, so they really take pride in kind of the product that they're putting out. Yeah, um, yeah. Looks like a True Blind Mice record, right? So, so the next one is like a monologue kind of thing, which I think uh, was my I think was probably our favorite so far, uh, uh, or at least top one two. It's a so, it's a solo record. It's a and uh, not very common, but it's a solo drum record. My yeah. Pitch of Black oh. Dynamite. Oh. I mean, look, look at look at this uh, centerfold here. It's so yeah. cool to see the studio and everything. Yep. And uh, can we again, see the front? Yeah. There we go. I mean, what else can I say? Black Dynamite. Yeah. And uh, again. I think that the inner sleeves are so well done, crafted, and, and thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. Each one of them is different. That one's got kind of the cover, some of the cover art on it. Yeah. 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 So it's like hitting sparks. You know, you have this, it looks like when the the stick is, is hitting the, the drum, the drum, yeah. right? You're getting yeah. to get that spark. I mean, that's how you feel. This, this record is so like well recorded, and the music is amazing. Sometimes, you know, you might think, well, oh, how can I, a solo drum record be good or, you know, but um, what, what what he accomplished here, it, it's amazing, fantastic. Um, I agree. You know, for a solo yeah. record, for a solo drum record, this is so surprising. It is so, such a, I would say it's like a discovery kind of experience. You just think, how good can yeah, this be? What absolutely. is it going to sound like? What, what kind of approach is it going to be? And then I was like, Dude, this is this is really good, you know. I do think this is my favorite for sure out of the three. It's just so mm -hmm. unique. And, and Mike, yeah. Mike Mitch from Fort Worth, my hometown. He um, yeah, grew up in Arlington. He went to Booker T. Washington Performing Arts High School in Dallas, which is our big local yeah. you know, performing arts high school. Um, he's pretty much known as a, as a jazz virtuoso badass. Yeah. Um, yeah. The different styles on these songs and just throughout the songs um, mm -hmm. just blew me away. I think that this one for me will probably have the longest, like, I don't know. The, I'll, the more I listen to it, the more I'll get out of it. You know? Right. Those are two LPs. Yeah. I don't know if you said that or not. But, yeah, so it's two LPs of solo drum music, and I never got bored. I totally enjoyed it, and I kind of regretted not paying closer attention to it while I was listening to it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, Man, some of these songs, I don't know which one it was, but just like the tempo changes and, and um, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff he was doing, I was listening to it and just trying to comprehend like what he was thinking and how he was building the song, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 I, 
Yeah. I was, I, I love this one. I think uh, one, one thing that's cool is on the back, it talks about the kit that he uses. So he's mm -hmm. using a DW drum set, Zildjian cymbals and Zildjian sticks, which, you know, I'm not surprised they make sticks, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware they did. Remo drum heads and then LP percussion. And that is really important because he starts the set like, like it's very much like as the cover uh, indicates, like it's like a like a spark, like he just kind of flies off and just starts going. Mm -hmm. But there yeah. are, you know, and, and this is the, this is something that, you know, can be done. So like he's using like mm -hmm. percussion for melody, like you mm -hmm. could yeah. see him, he, you could see him. He's using, I mean, rack toms, but he's using also like these. I don't know, like like uh, other types of percussion instruments to to create like a musicality to it beyond just mm -hmm. like a beat. And uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and honestly, I'm sure he he would do fine with just a small jazz kit. But he clearly like he has like a lot around oh, him. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's fiery. Um, there's there's just uh, it, 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 it's just you know it's very musical. So like mm -hmm. it's not just like somebody just doing like ripping drum solos the whole time like. There, mm -hmm. there is like a musicality to this, songs yeah. to this, like that we are used to. So it's an extremely mm -hmm. impressive two LP set. And um, when I was reading kind of the notes on on JMI's website, they mentioned that they were introduced to uh, to, to Mike through a trio session that they recorded that hasn't been put out yet. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they're they're planning to put it out, but that that was kind of the introduction. And they were like, we need to get this guy back into the studio. And uh, he also worked with Stanley Clark. Um, uh, he also worked with uh, Derek Hodge, who's a Blue Note artist, who has worked with like uh, Mulgrew Miller, Robert Glasper, um, and, and other players. So, I mean, um, there there are probably yeah. plenty of people that are familiar with yeah. Mike's work. But uh, but yeah, so this one really I think was uh, was the surprise because it was just an unknown territory of a two LP drum yeah. session, and right, I think right. uh, this one was was really great. If you're a drummer, I think. You definitely want to get. You definitely want to pick this up. This is yeah, 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 yeah. The the impression I had, uh, Mike, was like, you know, we see like solo bass records, like um, you know, some Dave Holland records or solo uh, piano but from, you know, many artists. But when it, I think when it comes to solo drum, I just think it's just drumming. But you can get some so many different tones from from a drum kit, and. Uh, because you also have the, the, the strength, the tone, everything changes. So this record is like, I think it's quite an accomplishment. It's one of the best things I've ever heard. It's, yeah. It was a big like eye opener, surprising. And I, I think, um, yeah, that's a record everybody should, should take, a, take a peek at because. All right, I did want to mention also the uh, that this was recorded and mixed to a Studer eight, uh, sorry, a Studer A80 master recorder on ATR magnetic uh, master half inch tape at Reservoir Studios in New York City, September 5, 2022, released in 2023. So again, telling us all about the kind of the, the recording details, um, all of the different mastering um, engineers involved, the producers involved, really, you know, a lot of the, all the things that we love to, to read about and know about. And, um, so, so again, and, and, and this one was also, uh, manufactured at their uh, plant vinyl de Paris in Paris, France. So I think that's probably what their go-to is. It's a similar jacket where it's a little, little um, less stocky, but they still have that kind of uh, nice gloss on it. Still really well done. Um, oh yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. So packaging, packaging is great. You know, recording, mastering is great. Music is great. So, you know, one thing I wanted, I wanted to note too. Move myself big for this. Is that I noticed on the two that came from Paris, they came inside these these yes. vinyl solutions uh, inner sleeves, which was super nice. Like it had the it had those nice printed inner sleeves, and these were inside of them mm -hmm. with the red inside of that, yeah. which was just a really nice touch. Yeah, like you know, it's it's like they're they know. Well, they got to be they got to be into vinyl, obviously, right? Because they're doing all this stuff that you know we would ask someone to do if we were just kind of picking. Mm -hmm. You know what we, what we wanted in a record, right? It's triple A. Oh, yeah. Here's all the details. Nice inner sleeves, nice jackets, um, nice pressings. Because, I mean, that for the Maya one sounded good, but the two that they pressed in Paris for me sounded amazing. 
Like I yeah. didn't even clean them. They were perfectly clean. Listen to them. And um, yeah, I was impressed. Just, yeah, just want to share two more, two more titles that I have uh, from JMI. Actually, it's the first two records they released, JMI 1 and 2. The first one is called Sit Back and Relax and Unwind by Steve Wilson. So with uh, Ray Angry, Ben Williams, and Willie Jones III. Again, so much care and detail, picture, presentation, details. Uh -huh. Yes, and this one again was recorded in 2016. It was the very first recording. Um, you know, Steve Wilson. Uh, uh, this record, according to websites, the, the, the culmination, what the obsession, obsession uh, with well-produced records from CTI, uh, uh, ECM, Blue Notes, Steeple Chase. You know, and uh, uh, and Steve is such a master of, of both. Um, uh, alto and soprano sax, and mm -hmm. with, with guys like uh, Willie Jones III, and especially Ray Angry on piano, getting such a re relaxed, laid back performance from all these guys. This record is also like really, really good. You can stream this record. Um, that's a great cover. Yeah, that's a cool cover. Yeah, yeah. This record is fantastic. It's really, really good. Uh, now, I, I kept the. Uh, was that the i'm sorry which uh which number in the series is that number one so that's jmi that's the first record they put out yes okay. he only said that twice already god right, mike well, cut this out then <laughs> all right, all right. Here, yeah he used the sleeve i got them off and those jackets like it's kind of oversized they're hard to fit in a, in a regular uh, outdoor sleeve and all right yes here. yeah they're hard to fit, yes, because they're thick. Like it's a tone box. Yeah. Nice. That's how the label looks like. It's really, really well done. I mean, those records, are, they sound amazing. As uh, you, you guys pointed out, there's a high quality component here, for sure. I yeah. mean, they, they start AAA, they, they, they're not going to be like, be lazy at the end. They're going to do something really exactly. good. Yeah. And JMI number two, uh, uh, according to the website, it was a, a conscious choice of uh, which one to get because Ray Angry he played uh, in the sessions for Steve Wilson. So Ray Angry is a pianist. This is one of the best records I've ever heard. Sound quality music. It's so it engaging. Really so yeah, the cover is badass. I mean, the label. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and and I mean, it, it's such it's such a it's such great work. And uh, I mean, Ray Angry for uh, what doesn't know, uh, he's been playing with the Roots for, for a long time. He has a solo career also, and he's actually touring with the, with the Roots now. And he's gonna be in a future uh, JMI release, which we're gonna talk about. Yeah. But th this record is amazing. This record is amazing and uh, fairly cheap at your local store if you go search for one, or even order directly. Is it solo? Is it just him on piano? No, there's a solo piano coming in December, Ray Angry okay. Three. Okay. But this one is a full band. It's, a, a, it's very funky, swingy. It's jazzy, groovy. It's it's an amazing record. Amazing, yeah, amazing. I'm gonna buy that, that one. Is that? Yeah. Do they do they provide the um the the tape details on that? What it was recorded on? Yeah, let me open here for a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the inner sleeve is also badass. Oh, that's a cool photo. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. So it's Ray Angry, Piano, Hammond, M3, Fender Rose, Voriter, Derek Hodge, an acoustic and electric bass, Eric Harlan, drums and percussion, Ambrose Akimusir, which is uh, on uh, Blue Note now, on trumpet, oh, and cool. Myro Walden, a tenor alto uh, soprano, Concert, auto flutes, bass, clarinet. So there's a lot yes. going on here. That's oh, a yeah. lot. The Zucker is badass. Uh, so recorded on uh, March 2017, Reservoir Studios. Recorded yeah. to RTM SM 900 two inch tape on a Studer A800 Mark III. Mixed down to ATR half uh, inch analog tape on an Ampex ATR 102 in 2017. 
yeah. mastered by Scott Ho. Uh, yeah, man, manufactured by Palace. It's a Palace pressing. Oh, oh palace. great. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this record is like, I think I posted like once or twice in, in our Instagram and uh, guys get it because I think I think I paid like less than $20 for this. I got oh, um, the the Maya one that I got, I got off Dusty Groove. So if you're in the United States, Dusty Groove might be a good way to get these. Yeah. And they were, yeah. I think we got it for 25 bucks. So it's not yeah. like yeah. these are these are crazy expensive records. Oh no! And uh, and honestly, they are triple A, heavy jacket, yeah. well pressed. Yeah, I mean, and uh, contemporary jazz. So I think for even like 40 dollars, it's still a bargain. Yeah, agreed. Right. Totally. All right, so we did also want to mention because there's kind of an exciting release coming out. Um, mm -hmm. I can I can share my screen, Felipe. Do you want to um, discuss this a little bit? Oh, that's not it. Yeah, come in attractions. Oh my god, cut yeah. this out. Go. All right, okay, this is it. Yeah, this it's super cool. I think uh, you know everybody should be thinking about seeing the musicians that what's going on there and uh it's an easy pre-order i pre-ordered mine for sure yeah so i think this is it says here pre-sale only okay it's a four lp box this is david murray and david murray is a you know very famous jazz artist i think he started his career on indian navigation he has a, a lot of um you know must uh have in your collection lps so it's him with Questlove and Ray Angry. Um, the title's Plum. It's 4LP box. And this pre-sale only makes me think like you basically have to get it pre-ordered. Otherwise, there's not going to be uh, another opportunity. So yeah. um, this is something that they're, that, that JMI is really excited about. Um, mm -hmm. It says allow for six-month fulfillment. This is the big one, right? So this is a, this is a big title that they're really – really excited about um maybe the biggest mm -hmm. title they've done to date so far um, yes and it's, and it's with a with quest love i mean you know and i think uh i don't know i have not pre-ordered this yet but i really would like to get it yeah, i think i'm gonna have to it looks cool yeah no, I, I think for the for the way prices are going now i think uh 150 for such a lineup and such a quality pressing i mean right just yep. click the button mike purchase yeah <laughs> well here's the thing i mean i do want to point out it does say pre-sale only yeah. so i'm not i'm not i'm not sure how to you know interpret that but it could be that you have to basically pre-order it and they'll, that'll secure your your copy and and that's the only way to get it so mm -hmm. um just want to point that out if anybody is interested in this title um yeah. to not sleep on it we'll yeah. let everybody know if that's not the case but yeah that's what it sounds like yeah. to me too, and it makes sense because a four LP box set that's nice is going to be expensive to produce, right? And mm -hmm. so it sounds like they're going to buy however many people order, or they're going to produce however many people order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it's quite an interesting uh, type of set collaboration. On the description, they say they only set for one day in two thousand and two, uh, summer two thousand and two. Okay. Uh, the three of them, no rehearsing, no planning. They just sat down and played. Oh wow! They captured that, and that, that that's what they're going to put out. That's a lot of playing, too, man. It's four LPs, right? Yeah. It's pretty so cool. This, one, this one's cool. Um, so we'll link we'll link this in the description if you want to just um, uh, get a direct link to it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think uh, JMI is a label that I've been aware of thanks to Mike Notes and Tones. I also think Watkin Brown has also um, been, I think he's a, he's like a completist of, of this label. Um, so it's it's been on my radar. I've, I had the Maya uh, release already, uh, but I'm mm -hmm. really happy to get the other two. Um, yeah. And I'm definitely considering this Plum recording. So yeah. I, uh, I think they're a cool label to look at. I think they're doing it the right way. They're they're small, independent, working with really great musicians. There's really nothing else I could ask for in terms of uh, you know, yeah. getting a new new artist in my collection. What do you guys I mean, think? I mean, first I just wanted to thank them again for sending us those records. I thought that was really nice. Um, I will say just in closing that two things. First, 
I think Maya was, you know, here for me, you know, maybe like kind of a middle of the road record for me, but the other two, especially that, uh, that drum record were really killer. So I'm excited to get some of their other records. I'm probably going to order that Ray angry one that you showed Felipe as soon as we get done here. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to consider the plum box. The other thing, you know, I think we mentioned CTI a couple of times and that seems like kind of the formula they're following. You know what I mean? Like really high yeah. quality musicians, high quality recording, high quality pressings, triple a good mm-hmm. mastery. So yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. nice that there's people out here that are doing this kind of stuff. And I think that, the community should should support um, folks that are doing this yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, to to wrap up, um, what I would like to say is that when you think out of five, we, we always look at the usual suspects, right? Usual big labels out there that we know of, no need to mention. But there's so much great stuff, great audio fire things, well done things, uh, kind of going under the radar, like JMI, or if you go to Bandcamp, in Asia, in Europe, there's so many great labels that up to discovery, we don't have to stick with the same ones and just expecting them to do everything. So mm-hmm. I, I think looking at uh, JMI is good. Uh, labels like JMI, we can expand, we can see what else is out there and uh, and start searching. I think discovery is, is the most beautiful thing out there for us to do. Well said. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, also echo the sentiment here. Um, thanks to uh, Jay at JMI um, for contacting us and sharing these records with us. Mm-hmm. Um, let us know what you think about JMI. If you have any titles of theirs or if you're interested, leave some comments below. Like and subscribe as always. Um, mm-hmm. And thank you. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.